Yeah, it, it took a long time to find someone who would even begin to make the DMT for me, let alone, you know, let the government, you know, give the permits for him to manufacture it. Yeah, and uh, for FDA to give it the stamp of approval to give it to humans and for the DEA to um, allow me to possess it and for my chemist friend, you know, um, it to, to make it. Well, it, it, it was primarily Cash 22s, yeah. Um, you know, one of the problems was that nobody had really seriously asked the government uh, to do a study like um, mine in about 20 years. And so there were, um, so there were new divisions um, that were set up at FDA. Uh, There's a whole new generation of regulators there who didn't have any idea what you know to do. Um, I, I even uh, tr tried getting th you know some of them to go to the archives in Washington D.C. to get the old paperwork from those old studies that were done in the 50s and 60s. And uh, th every one of those studies had very meager paperwork. It was all very informal. Um, and I even spoke with uh, with uh, a few of the old chemicals, um, with with uh, some of the chemical supply houses that uh, that provided the drugs um, in those studies. And I spoke to a couple of the old timers, and and uh, they just laughed. They said, "Oh yeah, you know, so and so would call us, and we send them some." Um, and I mean, that was about as complex as it was. Um, yeah, so I had to reinvent the wheel in in a way, um, and 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 I had to get. You know, people in in uh, the various agencies, uh, who's oftentimes had kind of um, you know conflicting purposes and charges and responsibilities to speak with each other, to uh, collaborate, uh, to give you know conditional approval based on some possible subsequent development later on down the line. And did you do this for yourself? You had some sort of regulatory affairs specialist. You know, to help you through the government? No, no, I just did it myself. It was all trial and error. Yeah, I was just on the phone, you know, with uh, people in D.C. three times a week for about 18 months. Yeah, um, but I figured as long as they didn't say no, I would keep on trying. Like I had, uh, been, uh, um, I had um, submitted an MDMA study in 1985, um, and uh, the FDA just said no. You're not doing it. Forget it. So I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, and and then about a few years later, I started the you know the you know permit process for the DMT work, and my application ended up in another division of FDA, um, and uh, they were more open-minded, and uh, they didn't tell me no. Um, they just were confused and confusing. Uh, I didn't know what person, uh, you know, which specific division to speak to, and um, you know, they weren't certain if I was a drug company or a manufacturer or. Uh, you but they weren't opposed to you anyway. No, yeah. no, they just were th throwing up a lot of roadblocks. But I think it was almost unintentional. They just really didn't. Um, um, they really didn't know what to do. Uh, you know, if you can ever get your hands on some footage from a BBC from a BBC show called Horizon, um, um, they do a great interview w w with a fellow named Curtis Wright, um, and Curtis was the MD at FDA um, that was overseeing my project, and he gives a very good description of that process. 